Today we're taking a look at Season 9 of Apex, otherwise known as Legacy, and it's one of the biggest updates the game has had so far, with some surprising additions. Map changes, a brand new legend linked to Titanfall, and a permanent new game mode called Arena that's completely separate from BR. A big thanks to EA for sponsoring the video today, and with that said, let's dive in and take a look. So I played all this in an event last week, I had a few hours to test everything and we're starting off with Valkyrie, the new legend. Her father was the pilot from Titanfall 2, Viper, and probably the most interesting of her abilities are the VTOL jets. It's a passive ability that allows her to use the jets to propel herself into the air. You do have quite a bit of control here too and it's achieved by pressing jump a second time when you're in the air and you can begin to float, so you can still utilise jumping if you need to. You do have limited fuel though and it reduces pretty fast. The recharge time is quite long too, so you don't really want to be using it all at once and then not have any fuel when you're in a pinch. Secondly, while maneuverability is pretty good in the air, you're still a fairly easy target to track. Valkyrie's tactical ability is her cluster missile, as the name would suggest. You unleash a cluster of missiles at your enemy with a shoulder targeting system. This has two purposes. Not only can you deal damage to your target if they're within the radius, but more importantly, they also get stunned. And I found this really useful for separating enemies from their team. And when you get a successful stun, the enemy will have an electric charge around them, making sure you know that they've got limited movement and it's time to attack. Her ultimate is all about repositioning though and it's called Skyward. It allows Valkyrie to launch into the air, getting extremely high before then skydiving down to another part of the map. This can either be used to reposition defensively or offensively. And what's great about this is that teammates can latch onto her and go along for the ride, take your whole team with you. And when you're in the air, it just acts like the initial skydive from the plane where Valkyrie will decide the location of the team unless they want to branch off. Also, if you come across an enemy Valkyrie using her cluster missiles, try not to run away from them in a straight line because they form a grid of 12. So make sure that you don't run straight into them. Also, once you fire them, you can just move and they'll find their way to the target location. There's a really cool nod here to the North Star Titan from Titanfall 2, which had an ultimate called Flight Core, which makes sense since Viper's father's Titan was the North Star Titan. A nice touch. I really enjoyed playing Val, but I do think I need a bit more time to get efficient with her VTOL jets. It's a great ability, but using it at the right times is so important. They're incredibly strong, but if you use them incorrectly, you could end up being a sitting duck. Another thing to remember is that her jets are incredibly loud. If you're playing a BR mode, you can really pinpoint where a Valkyrie is by just listening to where those sounds are coming from. Now there's a lot to cover here, so we're moving on now to the arena mode, and this is something that I found really exciting and fun to play. It's literally called Arenas. Apex as we know it in the past has always been about that battle royale experience, but Arenas is completely different and entirely separate and permanent. This is not a limited time mode. Arenas is a 3v3 competitive mode set on its own custom maps. So let me give you the basic concept of it before we get into the finer details. You've got two teams of three and then you pick your legends like you normally would. And then you go into an arena where the only way to win is to eliminate the other team. Do so and you'll get a point or a round and it's first to three rounds to win but you have to win by two clear rounds to at least give a losing team a chance. If it's a tie there'll be a sudden death. Arenas take place on custom maps, Party Crasher is a downed ship that Mirage lost control of and ploughed into a downtown plaza. Naughty Naughty, Phase Runner is an early prototype version of the Phase Runner pipe and there will be new locations added and current map POIs will also pad out the map pool. One thing that sets this apart though from your typical team deathmatch fight is that there's an economy system here, brand new game mechanics. At the start of each round you've got to purchase your gear as well as your abilities, shields and grenades. Do well in a round and you'll gain more currency to have a better buy in the following round. Not only that, but there are canisters around the map that will give you and your team extra currency for the following round. And as I played, I realized the importance of picking these up. While there's no real looting in this mode, there are supply pods around the level that have healing items and as you have to buy them, it can be really useful to get control of these. Alongside that, there'll be a large drop pod which will bring in better weapons during the round. At the beginning of each round, it will tell you what will be contained in that drop. So depending on if you're winning or losing, it may be worth going for it. It's important to know though that weapons do not carry across between rounds. Once the round ends, even if you survive, everything's gone, you've got to purchase your gear again. The longer the game goes on though, the more currency you get each round and the better armor is provided to you. If the game goes to sudden death, as I said, there'll be a deadlock and you get more money than you know what to do with. It's basically anything goes at that point. 
Each weapon can also be upgraded for money. This gives you better attachments and scopes. It's a simple enough system, so you don't have to worry about picking each attachment. And I found that in Arena, picking off the enemy was so critical to success and utilizing your abilities and not wasting them was really important for flushing enemies out. I noticed lots of tactics of sitting back and picking players with snipers. Knowing that shields are in short supply, this is actually a good tactic. The bow was also an incredibly powerful weapon in the arena too. Yes, that's a brand new weapon and I had an absolute blast playing with it. It's got a very high DPS but high skill ceiling, a bit like a wingman in that respect, but I'm glad that there's a bow in a PvP game that doesn't suck. And with it comes a new class of ammo, arrows. And what's cool about these arrows is that you can pick them back up, which you'll need to because in BR they are fairly rare. They will stick to surfaces and if you get a kill on someone that you hit with an arrow, you'll find them in their death box. Something interesting I found with the arrows though is that if an enemy misses you but you don't know where they shot from because it's quite quiet, you can use the angle where that arrow impacted in a wall to guide you and give yourself a better idea of where that shot came from. It's not completely silent though, it is quieter than most weapons but definitely a stealthier option. The bow also has two hop up slots that you can use at the same time. One is the shatter caps which changes the arrow into one which shatters on impact, almost turning it into a shotgun pellet, great for short range. And then Dead Eyes Tempo allows you to get a faster draw if you can fire the arrows at the perfect tempo. So releasing the bow at the perfect time. It's actually a lot harder to do than you might think and it will definitely take a bit of practice getting used to. In Arena though I found myself picking up the bow but not actually upgrading it. I found that my money was better spent elsewhere and if you land your shots you can use the bow incredibly effectively even at longer ranges. Arena mode was a blast. I absolutely loved it. It's a new form of gameplay for Apex and I'm sure that there's big plans from EA maybe to do competitive tournaments on this down the line. I'd love to see the best Apex players in the world going at this and I'd love to see more new game modes in the future. Of course this changes to Olympus 2, the last map that they added and a rather big one that you'd be hard pressed to miss. A mysterious craft crash landed onto the surface, the Icarus, and sadly it did not come alone. It's brought with it a huge parasitic plant of unknown origin that slowly consumed the ship. I feel like there's a big story here coming in and we'll find more about this as time goes on. The ship is located where Crossroads used to be and it's a huge place of interest. It's massive and it's a pretty cool TDM style area to fight over. If you can find one of the dead crewmates, they might also have a bridge card on them and this will let you access the bridge with plenty of loot. Overall, there's a ton of stuff in this update and that's not even touching on any of the balance changes that they made with the patch. Arena mode, very interesting to me especially if you can play it with a full squad communicating versus another squad could get incredibly competitive. There are a load of tactics to be had in relation to what you and your teammates want to buy and how to control certain areas and I'm really interested to see how it progresses and how it's received. There's a big opportunity here for clutch moments, 1v3s, big plays with abilities and also gun skill. With that said, that's all for today, folks. Do let me know your thoughts so far on Apex Season 9, and it's all going to kick off for everyone on the 4th of May. If you enjoyed the video, guys, leave a like. If you didn't, a dislike. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.